Yo, how's it going everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here, and welcome to another review of the Pokemon Journey series. We're going to be covering episode 109 today. It's the Ash vs. Raihan episode. The battle to determine whether Ash makes it into the Master's class or not. So was Ash able to succeed and make it to the Master's class? Or did Raihan defeat him? Well, before I get on to the episode review, I just want to say if you're new to the channel, you like this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It'd be pretty awesome if you would do that. Anyways, let's talk about this episode. So the majority of this episode is the battle between Ash and Raihan, but I like the beginning of the episode where Ash is heading up to the Hammerlock City Gym. And he got there super early, unlike how Raihan, that's like basically his main turf, so he's up every morning, you know, training, doing whatever, taking selfies. But we have Leon here who's just basically sleeping in the bush because, uh, yeah, this man, he just gets lost all the time. So he wanted to be early for this battle. So, yep, he found, he actually found Hammerlock, fell asleep in a bush, and waited all night for Ash and Ryan's battle. I don't know, but I found it to be funny. But anyways, let's get on to the battle, shall we? Now, this battle is a 3v3 match, and both opponents are limited to one gimmick in the entire battle. So Ash can't use both Dynamax and Mega Evolution. He's basically got to choose which gimmick he's going to use. But they can use either Dynamax, Z-Moves, or Mega Evolution. Which I found that to be pretty interesting, but our first matchup here is Dragonite versus Raihan's Flygon. Now seemingly in the beginning of this fight, Ash has the advantage as Dragonite uses Dragon Dance to get faster and stronger, giving it an edge over Flygon. However, Raihan's a weather strategist, so he changes the weather utilizing his Pokemon. So he has Flygon use Sandstorm, which this will constantly do damage to Dragonite. And it also hides in the Sandstorm, just attacking Dragonite, and Dragonite is seemingly helpless. But Ash, using his big brain energy here, has Dragonite use Draco Meteor to fish out Flygon, and it seems to work. However, Flygon quickly retreats back into the Sandstorm, and Raihan's not going to fall for the same trick again and ends up taking out Dragonite with Flygon. And interesting enough, this is actually Dragonite's first L within Journeys. Up to this point, it's won every match it's been in. It almost lost to Iris' Dragonite, I will say that. But Ash recalled it before it could faint, and it ends up winning the match in that battle. So yeah, this is Dragonite's first time it fainted in battle. Interesting. So, Ash is at a disadvantage now that he's down one Pokemon. He takes out Gengar, and it seems like the same thing's about to happen to Gengar as... Yeah, Gengar's attacks aren't landing. Flygon's just hiding in the Sandstorm, and then attacking Gengar when he's not looking, or in his blind spot. And he's getting pelted by the Sandstorm at the same time. And Gengar is getting considerable damage throughout all of this, including a super effective Crunch attack. So yeah, things are not looking good. It looks like Raihan's about to sweep Ash at this point. So Ash in the middle of the battle... Realizing that he has no choice but to Gigantamax as Gengar and forego Mega Evolution with Lucario later in the match, he does so. And Gigantamax is his Gengar, who eats the Sandstorm and basically takes out Flygon using two Dynamax moves, including a super effective fairy type attack and Max Starfall as Flygon goes down. So Raihan takes out a second Pokemon, which is a Gudra, and immediately uses Rain Dance to buff up its water type moves, and immediately begins pelting Gengar with a barrage of water type moves, like one after another. It's like, dude, you're like breaking the rules and not allowing Gengar to actually use his move. Seems like this is it for Gengar as it took considerable damage against Flygon earlier. And after Ash initially tries to recall Gengar, he ends up having faith in Gengar. And then this is pretty interesting, so Gengar manages to land his final Dynamax move, Max Starfall, which is super effective on Gudra, whereas Gudra lands a final water type attack. And I believe he uses Surf, or Hydro Pump. I can't remember, I think it's Surf. <laughs> Excuse me. It manages to connect with Gengar, and it's a double knockout with both of them going down. So both of them are now down to their last Pokemon. However, Ash is still at a disadvantage because Raihan can still Gigantamax his Pokemon, his ace, Geraldo. Whereas Lucario can't use Mega Evolution now, so Ash is, uh, yeah, he's at a complete disadvantage now. So it seems like the end of the line for Ash, as Geraldo Gigantamaxes, and lands two attacks on Lucario. Seems like it's the end, but that's when Lucario pulls out 
his giant Rasengan. Yeah, remember from the previous episode? Seems like his giant Rasengan, or his giant Rasengan aura sphere, has gotten actually bigger than the previous episode. And the crazy part is, he was actually mega evolved when he did that, or learned that new special aura sphere. Yeah, this one's even bigger, so, um, what would have happened if he actually mega evolved? Would it have been twice that size? Holy crap, that would have been like a spirit bomb at that point. Or Genki Dama, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, he, uh, throws his giant Rasengan aura sphere over to Gigantamax Duralden, manages to land a hit. Duralden tries to attack one more time, but it fails, and yeah, right hand's defeated. And Ash is now in the Master's 8. Holy crap, after all this time, after starting from the bottom, Ash is finally in the top eight. Now, I thought it was pretty cool that Ryan was pretty chill about his loss. Obviously, throughout the match, he was bragging that, yeah, this is going to be the end, Ash. I'm going to end you. I'm going to take out Leon. But, yeah, I like how he takes his loss with Grace, takes a selfie with Ash, and basically declares that he's going to eventually defeat him and Leon. And that's when we finally get the whole roster of the Masters 8 finally revealed, officially, in the anime. We learned that Ash is ranked 8th. Apparently, Iris, who was behind Ash, actually shot up past him and is ranked 7th. And then this one was a total surprise. Alon, of all characters, is number 6 in the Pokemon World Championships. That blew my mind. I was expecting it to be Paul, but it's Alon. That's pretty cool. Number 5 is Diantha. Nice, another champion. Uh, number four is Lance, who apparently is now a champion again. I think he was considered an Elite Four member when he was first introduced, but he's a champion of both Kanto and Johto, so that's cool. Steven Stone is number three. That was pretty cool. Cynthia, this one surprised me. Cynthia's number two, so Lance fell from two to four. So did Cynthia actually defeat Lance at some point? But anyways, um, of course, number one's Leon, but there you go. That's your Masters 8 roster. And there's going to be a gigantic tournament. I don't know why I call it gigantic. A huge tournament in the Pokemon world. With the Masters 8 going up against one another in a grand tournament. To determine who's going to be the number one trainer in the world. As the episode comes to an end. Oh boy guys. What an episode. This episode was awesome. In fact, this was one of my favorite Pokemon Journeys episodes at this point. It's definitely up there. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, match in the Pokemon World Championships at this point. So yeah, this episode was awesome. I It's just like the Ash vs. Volkner episode where the episode was just battle-focused. They, they met up beforehand, they talked a little bit. Their conversations beforehand were pretty awesome. You get to see into their characters. I like how Rayhan, just like with Dresnan B before him, was very cocky. Thinking he's going to end Ash here and end his run in the Pokemon World Championships. But nope. Our boy Ash comes out on top and ends up defeating him. And boy, was it satisfying. I will say that the segment with Gengar, Gudra, and then the ending with Lucario and Draldin was very short. I will give it that. I might take a half point off for that, since Flygon kind of stole the show for most of this battle. But I still thoroughly enjoyed this battle. I like the strategies used, like Raihan being the weather specialist like he is in the games. That's pretty awesome. I like the strategies used here. Ash being unpredictable instead of using Mega Evolution like a lot of us thought he would probably do considering, you know, Lucario Mega Evolved in the previous episode. He instead Gigantamaxes Gengar. And yeah, that was a strategy that helped him win the battle. Otherwise, he was going down because it was not looking good for Ash in the beginning of this battle. But as soon as he Gigantamaxed Gengar, yeah, he made a comeback and yet he was still at a disadvantage. But of course, Lucario seems to have mastered his giant Rasengan. And like I said earlier, it's literally stronger than it was before. And when he first used it, he was Mega Evolved. So how strong is he with Mega Evolution with this thing now? Yeah, I don't know, that just blows my mind. But yeah, this episode was awesome. There really isn't much else to say. Just a great episode overall. Yeah, and that's pretty much all I got for this episode review. I'll probably talk about my thoughts about the Masters 8 in a separate video, probably sometime next week as I'm still gathering my thoughts for that. But yeah, in regards to this episode, it was fantastic. Like a nine and a half out of 10, just below a 10 out of 10. Maybe a 10 out of 10, I don't know. 
I'm going back and forth whether I should give this episode a 10, a solid 10, or a 9.5. It's there. Maybe a 9.75, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, guys, in the comment section down below, what did you think of this episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What do you think of the Masters 8? What are your personal thoughts? Are you satisfied with it? Is there somebody you think shouldn't be there or should have been in there? Or do you think this list is just solid? Post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let's have a conversation, guys. It'd be pretty awesome to talk with you. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I'll talk to you guys later. I'm going to be doing a live stream very soon. So stay tuned for that. And I'll talk to you all later.